Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at conditional formatting using Excel. This topic could be covered in an introduction to data analytics and accounting or simply put a data analytics course. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, subscribe, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farheadlectures.com, you will find additional resources if you want to supplement your accounting education or pass your CPA exam. I have practice questions, notes, multiple choice, exercises that are considered quasi-CPA simulations, and resources for other accounting courses. So to illustrate the conditional formatting, I'm going to be using the example of a bank reconciliation. I'm going to be honest with you. When I was in practice, I never used this technique. Matter of fact, I learned this conditional formatting from my wife. My wife, she works at Johnson & Johnson and she works under medical devices. And part of her job is to compare pieces from one medical equipment to the other. For example, in, in terms of competitor or in terms of within J&J &J. and some medical equipment, they have thousands of small pieces and each piece has an identifying number. So, for example, a part of her investigation or part of, a, of her internal control is to make sure all the pieces that are in this equipment are also in this equipment or if there's anything is missing. So this is where I got the idea of conditional formatting, but I'm going to be using this idea to apply it in an accounting setting and I'm going to apply it to a bank reconciliation. Now, if you don't know what a bank reconciliation is, by all means, go to my YouTube channel and learn about the bank reconciliation. And basically, what is a bank reconciliation in a nutshell? At the end of every month, the company will have to make sure all the information that's on their cash general ledger, on their cash general ledger is, is complete and all the information on the bank statement is complete as well. So simply put, those two should equal each other. So what's on your books, what's on your books, and what's, this is your books, what's on your books, and what's on your bank statement, they should always equal to each other. Now, how do we make sure they equal to each other? Well, to make sure they're equal to each other is we prepare a bank reconciliation to make sure everything that's listed on, on one side is also, is also listed on the other side. So we know nothing is missing from the books and everything that's on the bank statement is shown on the books. Anything's on the books is also reflected in the bank statement. So that's the purpose of it. So to prepare a bank reconciliation, you're going to have what's called a reconciling item. What are the reconciling items? For example, you could have wrote a check and you always record the check in your cash ledger. You you wrote the check, but the, the check did not clear the bank. So it's in this list, the check in this list, but it's not in this list. If that's the case, if the check is missing, it's called an outstanding checks. Or you might have made a deposit of $3,000 right here. But that deposit is not shown at, in the bank. What does that mean? It means that that's a deposit in transit. Deposit in transit means it's on my in my books. I know I received the money. I know I deposited the money, but it's not in the bank because maybe I deposited that money the last day of the month and the, the bank did not reflect the deposit until the beginning of the following month. Or the bank might have gave me some interest, like $10 and 15 cent. I'm not aware of that interest because I don't check my bank statements every day. So once I receive the bank statement, I notice I have interest that's not shown on my cash general ledger. So this is the idea of a bank reconciliation, making sure I'm accounting for everything and those two, they should equal to each other. Equal to each other. Now for the purpose of this example, I have a small list. I have maybe 30 items in the real world. And I'm just, I'm kicking myself now. Like I, how, di how didn't I know about this when I was in the real world? In the real world, a bank reconciliation could have 500, 600 items. Every transaction, every check, every deposit is a transaction and you have to reconcile those transactions. So conditional formatting, it's going to help me tremendously identify the items very quickly. What's missing? What's missing from each list? So how do I do so? So I have my cash ledger. This is one list. So what you do is you highlight the first list and you highlight, you, you click on control and you highlight the bank statement numbers. And what I'm looking for is items that that are unique, okay? Because every when I write a check, it should go to the bank and the bank should clear it. It should be on my books, it should be in the bank. 
I want this conditional formatting to identify items for me that's it's in my cash ledger but not in my bank or it's in my bank and it's not in my cash ledger so how do I do so I highlight the columns that I want to examine I click on conditional formatting right here and I'm gonna go down and click on new rule once I do so I'm gonna click on format only unique or duplicate value I want to highlight unique values so I want to highlight what unique values are in each in each category in each column because those unique values it means they're in one list but not in the other because everything in my cache should be on my bank everything in my bank should be on my cache eventually so anything that's missing we call it outstanding but I want to identify those outstanding items so I can prepare my bank reconciliation and this list could be a list of two of, of any two items that you need to reconcile you could use the same technique so I'm gonna always like red because red you know you you could see this clearly so I'm gonna go color make it red click on okay click on okay and here's what happened for example it highlighted check number 177 what it's telling me check number 177 it's recorded in your cash ledger but it's not in the bank in your bank statement and checks at 177 it's not therefore this check 177 is called outstanding check also check 182 it's on my it's on my books in my cash general ledger but it's not in my bank statement it's an outstanding check deposit in transit three thousand dollar deposit in transit you made the deposit it's not shown in the bank yet and deposit number 226 it's not in the bank yet here it shows you that you have a non-sufficient fund fee of $25 the bank charge you this fee and it's not in your cash ledger and you have a non-sufficient check number 172 well let, let me check this to 169 because I do have 172 okay 169 just to make the example more realistic because I do have 172 here so check number 169 it's an insufficient check it means whoever paid you this money whoever gave you that check the check was it was not good okay so this check and there's another non-sufficient fee for check number 170 there are not two checks and two non-sufficient fee 1425 and 135 you might be wondering why did I choose 125 and 135 I'm gonna explain why in a moment why, why I choose those figures because there's another point I'm, I'm gonna try to make also check number 171 it's not on your list it seems this check was outstanding from the prior month now it cleared now I know I'll, I'll be able to clear it and I noticed that interest earned of ten dollars and fifteen cent it's not on my books it's on my bank statement that's a reconciling item and collection of a note of two thousand five hundred it's also the bank received the money but I'm not aware of it now I'm, I'm aware of it I'll, I'm, I need to make an adjustment so what did what this did it clearly gave me what items I need to reconcile to adjust make certain adjustment either on the cash or on the bank statement now once again if you don't know what the bank reconciliation is you're gonna find this recording a little bit not clear but the point is um, I like to design those Excel tutorial for accounting students but any list you could do the same thing for any two lists now now why did I choose 25 for non-sufficient fund one and non-sufficient fund fee as 25 so let's assume change this to 35 what happened is 35 is no longer a unique value because I have 235 it did not highlight the non-sufficient fee that's why I put the number 25 when I put 25 it shows me that uh, 25 and 35 are unique but when I have both when both numbers are 35 you have to be careful simply put you have to do maybe another study not another study you have to run if you if you know you have duplicate numbers you have to run another conditional formatting so what you do is you just highlight the numbers and you want them to give you the, the duplicates so you could new rule and format only unique or duplicate and I want the duplicate and it's gonna now highlight the duplicate for me so be careful if you have duplicate you may have to go a st step further now it highlight I have two duplicates now I can go back say okay these two duplicates well they're not on my cash general ledger then they must they then they are unique the reason they did they did not highlight as 35 and 35 because I'm looking for unique and they're not unique but if I do 25 and 35 they are unique so it's it basically I took this as a learning opportunity to show you you have to be careful you have to use your judgment a little bit more okay and I wish I really wish I knew about this um, this Excel function when I was in practice 
um, I used to put, literally pull my hair out sometime looking for either a missing deposit in transit, a missing check. And I hope you're listening to this. You could use this in your work, whatever you are doing, any two lists that you're reconciling. And sometimes you have hundreds, if not thousands of items on each list. How do I know what's missing? How do I know what's duplicate? Very, very easy. Condition highlighted, conditional formatting. Look for unique items or duplicate, whatever you are looking for. And this is only one illustration of conditional formatting. There are many rules in conditional formatting. Uh, for example, you could look for uh, format only cells that contain a certain number, uh, format only values that are above or below average, and you could define you could define all these numerical figures so it's very it's 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 a very powerful tool make sure to use it if you're an accounting student subscribe if you like to learn more about excel i'll be posting more tutorial subscribe share it with others like it study hard and stay safe during those coronavirus days good luck